a typical summer day in Texas, but if we look up to the sky, we see smoke from wildfires from the western states. Now, here's a very in- interesting animation. This is the rapid refresh model, the smoke trajectories, and we're going to go all the way back to July 4th. This is before it all went out of control, but you can see those fires start in Oregon and California around the 10th and 11th, the Dixie fire gets going. We get to the 17th and 18th of July and those plumes just work continuously around that ridge into the north central U.S. and the Great Lakes states. Now the southwestern U.S. has been free of that due to the influence of that upper level ridge, but quite a bit of that smoke makes its way into the Great Lakes area. And that leaves us with this frame right here, plenty of smoke in the I-35 region, up into Minnesota, and into the western Great Lakes. Looking at the weather map, aside from all the smoke, it looks like a very ordinary August day. The Bermuda High probably a little bit weak. We can see a little bit of a ridge off the Florida coast. However, the southeast U.S. replaced with this troughing due to a stagnating front moving into northern Florida and the northern Gulf. Behind that front, temperatures pretty mild, mostly 80s. And we go up further north and we pick up another cold front working through the Canadian prairies. In the western states, we've got a heat low, kind of a series of heat lows from Washington into northwestern Nevada. You can see smoke in some of these plots originating from the wildfires, and some of those smoke indications go all the way into North Dakota and even into Michigan. The heat has returned to the southwestern U.S., another heat low in that region. The map shows 111 around Lake Havasu, but if we dig a little deeper, we've reached 120 degrees at Thermal, California. But that does come close to the all-time high for August, which was set in 1997 with 121. And the heat wave continues in Greece and Turkey. Lots of 100-degree readings about six hours ago. You can see 104 recorded in the north part of the country, Athens 102, and down the Turkish coast where they have major wildfire problems up to 109. Antalya reported 111 at the 11Z observation. The Greek weather sites reporting up to 113.7 in our sun in Greece, and yesterday they reached 115 in Greece, not quite up to the all-time high for Greece or for Europe. That was reached in 1977 when Athens got up to 118.4, so just a few degrees short of that. And looking at the satellite imagery from about 10 hours ago, we can see wildfire problems in eastern Greece and in southwestern Turkey. If you go to social media, there's some tragic and pretty ominous wildfire video. So that's it right there. Some of that spreading into the coastal regions, and that's the other wildfire we have going on. I don't know what cities those are, but... You can head to worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov to see more of those images. Closer to home, we have our own wildfires. There they are in Northern California. We've got the McFarland Fire and the Monument Fire. Those are 20 and 15,000 acres, respectively. We've also got a new fire. This is the Salt Fire near Mount Shasta. I think that is actually flared up because it was listed at 100% contained yesterday. And of course, the more problematic fire is the Dixie Fire. That one is also flaring up. It's listed as 35% contained. That ignited on July 14th. Currently, there are 5,000 firefighters working on that. U.S. Forest Service and CAL FIRE in there. And it looks like it is going to be worse tomorrow. Pacific Gas and Electric Company, they disclosed shortly after the fire began in July that its equipment may have played a role in the wildfire's ignition. Checking on our friends up north in Alaska, 
Well, we've pulled a warm sector all the way up into the state. We can see 70s not only in the interior regions, but all the way up to Nome. Look at that, 77 degrees. So I got to go into Wikipedia here and see if that's near a record. And for August, that's about six degrees away from the all-time record. And the all-time record is actually 86 for the entire year. So yeah, it's hot, but it's not record-breaking. Maybe a record for the date. So yeah, I'll check my in-house data here. What is it? August 4th. Uh, the record is 74. That was set in 2002. And that's being brought northward by this cyclone out in the Bering Sea, the northerly gradient, helping to pump some of that warm air northward, and also this low off the British Columbia coast, slingshotting some of that warm air up to the north as well. However, out in the high Arctic of Canada, cold air advection and a strong occluded system in the Boothia Peninsula up to Baffin Island. And you can see in the wake of that, some very cold air coming in, lots of 30s and 40s, and there's almost certainly a wind chill right there at Baker Lake, 48 with winds gusting to 37 knots. Man, that would really feel great about now. And checking in on our southwest monsoon, stick a fork in it, she's done. Clear skies across Phoenix, Tucson, and the only clouds we're seeing are in New Mexico, and that's actually a north flow. So this is certainly not monsoon weather, but there could still be some residual moisture in the valleys. And let's see, yeah, coming down to 59 at Phoenix for the dew points. 61 at Tucson, kind of hanging on to some of that moisture though, but obviously due to the northerly flow coming in through New Mexico, that's going to mean we've got a ridge in place somewhere in this area here. And yeah, there's still a little bit of an easterly component coming in from Texas, but the channel of moisture coming up from Mexico and Texas is temporarily interrupted. So we'll go up to the 500 millibar chart and see what's happening. This time of year, this is a great place to start. And I'll show you how we put that together. Looking at all the curves and loops and stuff like that, we can make out a high pressure area or what we call a high height area over southern Nevada. So no wonder thermal is getting up to 120. That's basically a large heat dome and that covers this entire area right here. Now we do have this trough kind of chiseling into that ridge and as that moves eastward and gets into this troughiness, that trough here will likely amplify somewhat and we should see that become more of a factor coming into the southeastern states. And we do have a broad low pressure area centered across Ohio. And in between all this, we've got a jet stream running about like that. So if you're flying from Los Angeles to New York, you'd probably want to kind of bend north and pick up some of that tailwind and let that carry you eastward. So that's what's going on there in a split flow pattern in effect with more polar front jet energy in Hudson Bay. And let's run this forward and take a look at the trends going into the final half of this week. Well, that large high pressure or high height area continues to bake over Arizona. So very likely a lot of the monsoon pattern will remain shut down. There's that trough heading into Arkansas, Louisiana amplifying and very likely will be bringing some showers and thunderstorms to that part of the country. And here's another trough carve in its existence into the backbone of that ridge right there and that will ride around the top of that ridge and amplify and kind of get involved in some of the patterns in the Mississippi River Valley by maybe Saturday or Sunday. And you can see that taking place here, maybe not heading as far south as the previous trough, but very likely we'll be seeing some more rain in the Midwest and the Corn Belt over the weekend. Then going into next week, 
large trough moving through the northern tier states into Ontario and Hudson Bay. And then we get a very large ridge building across the northern plains and the central Rockies. So that means hot weather for this region here late in the week. And some of that will be expanding eastward into the Midwest. And if you want to see all that play out, the 850 millibar temperature anomaly is a great chart for that. We see a large cold air mass at this time over the southeastern states. Midland, Texas reported 58 degrees last night. So some very cold weather there. And there's all the heat out to the west. So the progression over the next week. Warming conditions in the north central U.S. Spreading into the Great Lakes. And by next week, very hot weather and another surge of warm air possibly working into the north central U.S. around Saturday and Sunday. And then behind that's the possibility of a cold outbreak around the 15th and 16th. So that could drop highs into the 50s and 60s in the northern states if that pans out, but that's quite a ways out. The National Hurricane Center showing an increase in activity in the Atlantic, so we're maybe edging a little bit out of that quiet pattern. And then the five-day outlook shows the potential for some development. This uh, wave right here is down at about 10 degrees north, which is fairly far south. This is a classic breeding area for hurricanes. Now, we do have the potential for any activity to recurve northward, but there's also the possibility maybe in about one to two weeks of something coming into the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, or the southeastern states. So we'll have to see on that. Yeah, a lot of ground to cover here. This program is really a lot of work, and I have to keep referring back to my notes. Um, SPC. Checking in on that, it looks pretty quiet. Marginal risk up there in Montana, but fairly weak storms across much of the country. And I do think we have covered just about everything important for today. We'll take a quick look up there in Montana. We can see the wildfire smoke very prominent there, filling in the gaps between the cumulonimbus. And we do have those storms going up, some Moisture in place and instability aloft, helping to generate some of this activity south of Cardston all the way down into the Great Falls area and more activity out to the east around Miles City. The Midwest, do we have any viewers in that region? Well, it looks like a nice day there. You can see the involvement of the lake breeze clearing out the Chicago and Milwaukee area. Northeasterly flow in place through much of the region, curving around to the south in Iowa. And as we get towards the Appalachians, we start picking up some thunderstorm activity due to the additional residual moisture. And there's how it looks in Virginia, North Carolina. We've got that frontal system off the east coast in the wake of that cold air advection, but just enough moisture and instability in place for some of those thunderstorms in Kentucky and West Virginia. We can see that frontal zone especially well in Florida. That's going to be the front right around Jacksonville, Tallahassee, back towards Pensacola. And then as we go south, we get into the more tropical air, which we typically do see this time of year. August is not the best time to go to Disney World. And then circling back around to Texas, we can make out that anticyclonic flow. See that curvature in the wind field, the cloud streets aligned with those streamlines. And we also see the wildfire smoke as kind of a hazy appearance, some smudges here and there. And that's what we saw in the opening clip. And I think that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank Harvey Chevalu for the increased pledge there. It is noted and appreciated. That kind of support keeps this program going. We've done it for five years now with a one to two year break, and hopefully we can keep going at it. So Harvey, thank you very much. And we will see everybody again here on Friday. Take care and have a great Wednesday night. Bye-bye.